Thank you for tuning in to our television program. I'm Brother Paul Williams, the minister of the Metro East Church of Christ, bringing families together in love. At the Metro East Congregation, we're not concerned with church hopping or church dogma. We're concerned about your individual spiritual growth. And that's what we commit to, and we tailor make your spiritual growth to your life specifically. And if that's what you're interested in, we want you to be a part of the positive and uplifting teaching at the Metro East Congregation. We're located at 1820 Highway 80 West in Jackson, Mississippi. We meet every Sunday and every Wednesday collectively. Amen. One last time, if you don't mind standing, amen. When we read God's word, daddy is talking, amen. So daddy wants to tell us one more time what to expect for our lesson for this morning. Amen, somebody? Amen. amen. Do not be deceived from the English Standard Version. God is not mocked. For whatsoever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit, from the Spirit reap eternal life. We're going to continue with our series for this month, Brick by Brick Breakthrough, Part 5. Amen? Tonight we will focus on First Fruit Breakthrough. Amen. If you are looking for a financial breakthrough and you're tired of living from paycheck to paycheck and you're ready for God's anointing and favor to stay in your life, then we need to understand first fruit breakthrough. Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 At this time, let us bow our heads in a word of prayer as we go to God and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save our souls. Our Lord and our God, we come before you right now ready to receive a blessing, ready to receive an understanding that we may not have ever had before according to your word. Father God, we're thankful for those who made it back. Father, we have so many of our number that have been ill with the flu and, and that are out of town at this time. And we pray that you give them safe passage back to this destination. Father God, we pray Lord, as we get ready to receive this, that you allow the spirit to speak to our spirit so that we may better change our soul and then change the way we act and react in this body. In Christ's name, we do pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. First fruit. First fruit. First means what, church? This is a question and answer period. Y'all can answer together. First means what? Very first. Very first. Amen. Fruit means something produced. Now, we love the Lord. Do we not? We even sing that, don't we? I love the Lord. He heard my cry. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bye and bye. We are quick to say how good God is, how much he's blessed us, and oh, we'll even catch the spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. We'll catch the spirit, so we say. Do you know that God knows if we really love him based on what we give him? When you say first fruits, a lot of times folks say, oh, here you go talking about money. That's okay, money's going to be part of it. But the original first fruit that you must give God is you. Now, first fruit is a concept that God was trying to teach Israel so that they would stop thinking they okay with him when, when they're not. Now, the church has missed out on blessings because we have done the same mistake as Israel. Amen. Now, funny thing about it is Christian means Christ-like or Christ people. Israel means people of God. And I wanna let you know that our ancestors in the Old Testament, we a whole lot like our mamas and daddies from the Old Testament if we're gonna be very honest and candid about this. God says, I want your first fruit. See, God doesn't want your spare time. He wants your first plan. To, oh, y'all missing that. Oh, y'all missed that, amen. God is not asking for your leftover half hour. See, so, y'all, okay, okay. Come here, y'all, come here, come here. Let me, let me tell you what I'm talking about. When you plan your week, all right, Plan your week like this. This is God's time, then I go to work. Amen. Oh, that's heavy. 
oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, but I go to work early. Now, first of all, I'm the wrong one to come and play that you get up early to go to work thing. I got no mercy on you on that, amen? Chances are I'm at work when you wake up for work, amen? So I'm probably not gonna be very sympathetic. That was just me, that wasn't Bible, amen? Now, because I pray for me too, all right? But get this, that means the beginning of your time your first fruit of time when you wake up in the morning should be to God, not, oh Lord, I'm running late, let me get to work, and jumping on that freeway. No, first fruit. And it ain't got nothing to do with money, but it's got a lot to do with mentality or your spirit walk, amen? amen. You see, when you start off your day with God having the first fruit of your day, then the rest of your day cannot be bad because you're preparing for a tough day or you're preparing for a blessed day. But this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. God made it. You've seen it. First thing you ought to do is get up and say, hallelujah, not, oh Lord, it's Monday. Amen. If we can receive that first fruit lesson, somebody say amen. amen. Okay, so now, first fruit. Let's see where this comes from, church. First of all, we have to have the courage to give first fruit to God. Because see, everybody don't believe in giving God the first fruit of their lives. And I, Whoa, whoa, I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about in the church. Amen. amen. See, because first fruit comes, see, because in the evening time, you know, now this morning we was filled to the gills, amen? amen. Man, in the evening time, folks, I, I, I'm, I'm amazed. What is going to happen if God come back Sunday evening? I know, I know when people say God is going to come back, when, don't no man know and I don't know either. But I know one thing, if he come back on a Sunday evening, a lot of us Christians ain't going to be, we're going to be sure enough show. Amen. amen. Because we're commanded by God, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of sin. Some is, amen? But exhorting one another so much the more as you see the day approaching. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. But we must have the courage to stand for what I believe is right and not follow the crowd, church. Amen? Based on what is written in the word of God, even when it is unpopular, inconvenient. Y'all say that with me. One more time. One more time. Now, you know what's inconvenient? Getting up an hour early and meditating to God. That's inconvenient. Amen? Amen. Getting up and, and see, because what God wants you to do is, listen, if you're taking notes, check this out. The beginning of your day, you should take care of your spirit, your soul, and your body. Amen. Your spirit is the real you. Amen. Your soul is your personality. Your body is your soma, S-O-M-A, which is where both reside. The first thing you get up is you get up and you praise God Amen. for 20 minutes. Read his word. Amen. Secondly, then you begin to do some type of study and to change how you feel about some things. Third, then you need to get up and exercise. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. You don't hear it. Listen, you are triune in your creation, okay? You are more than a spirit and a body. You are a spirit, a soul, and a body. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 says, I pray that you take control of and, and, and be good steward over your spirit, soul, and body. That you prosper in your spirit, soul, and body. That's what God says in his word. Now, God's word is true, is it not, church? Now, with that being the case, here we go. I must have the courage to get up and exercise for at least 20 minutes. Doctors, surgeons, psychiatrists say that if you go and exercise for just 20 minutes, it will improve your outlook on your day and improve your health. You know what? That ain't nothing but what God wrote in the first place in his book. Everything that discovered in science right now, God has already said it plainly in his word, amen? So I must have the courage to do the things even when it's what? One more time, church, inconvenient. Or when I have to stand alone with the Holy Spirit knowing that God is able to do what he promised in his word and the Holy Spirit helps me to perform it. Because see, there comes sometimes you're not gonna wanna get up, but you better say, Holy Spirit, dwell in me. Touch my eyes that I might see, <laughs> amen. All your goodness, grace, and power be beside me every hour. Be my drink, be my living bread. Keep me 
Oh, y'all, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get through this lesson. Amen, amen. Now, now, here we go. Church, reap what you sow. Listen very carefully, church. As we truly trust in the Lord, we began to understand his law of truly reaping and sowing. We are commanded to understand this law in the New Testament, but it began in the Old Testament. Now church, you just happen to come on a day, I just really sure enough feel like getting deep for a minute, amen? So I want you to grab your pencils, because I'm gonna throw something on you you might not have seen before, amen? So if you're ready to receive, say, I'm ready amen. to receive it, amen. First of all, church, remember Nehemiah. Nehemiah was working for the king. He was the king's cupbearer. Nehemiah saw that his country, Jerusalem, was in tattered shape and the, the walls were all crumbled down. It was like the worst hood it could have ever been. And so Nehemiah, sad, goes to the king. The king says, what's wrong with you, Nehemiah? And Nehemiah says, my heart is broken because Jerusalem's walls are down. My, the city is exposed and, and it looks terrible. And, th and he's remembering the splendor of God's people. Because see, what happened was God's people lost focus, lost worshiping God. And when you lose worshiping God as your focus, everything you have in your material world falls apart. All right? Watch this. When Nehemiah builds the wall back with the help of all the other Israelites, they did it within 50 or so days, church. Unbelievable. Sanballat and Tobiah, all the critics were laughing at them, snickering, <laughs> what y'all gonna do, build it? You gonna build a wall and a fox gonna run up and it's gonna fall down. Oh, they had all kind of critics. Just like you have critics in your life. People who are quick to take the vision you have and try to discount it. You understand? God birthed a vision of ministry in your life. And when you are around the critic of Sambalat and Tobiah, they will take away the joy you have for God and begin to snuff out your fire. Say no! Don't let them do it. Don't let the fire in you go out just because somebody else is too small to see the big vision God has in you. Amen, somebody? Somebody should have shouted then. That's all right, amen. I shout for you because I know it's in you right now, amen. So then Nehemiah does this. Nehemiah has gotten everybody together. They built the walls back now, amen. All right, now, Nehemiah realizes here's where we messed up. We need to go back to realizing God is real. So Nehemiah does this. He says, we're going to put back in place what God had in place in the first place. First fruits. Nehemiah says, we're going to do this and to bring the first fruit of our ground and the first fruit of all fruit of all trees year by year into the house of the Lord. Nehemiah knew what was it that allowed Israel to get conquered. A lot of people don't see these things related, church, because Israel stopped worshiping God. Israel stopped fearing God. And because Israel stopped fearing God, Israel became corrupt. And when Israel became corrupt, it began to devour itself with sin. And when you are busy devouring yourself in sin, you don't see your enemies coming up on you. And when your enemies come up on you and you're devouring yourself with sin, you are weakened and easily conquered. And let me tell you something about a predator. A predator don't jump on a strong lamb. A predator jumps on a weak lamb. So when you're weak and in your weakest state, that's when Satan, like a predator, will pounce upon you when you're feeling weak and down. That's when he'll try to tear you apart and you got to stand strong in the Lord. Amen. 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 All right, if you're still with me, say amen. amen. All right, here we go, here we go. Year by year, house of love. So the way we stay strong is we give God our best first. Amen. When I do that, when I have my best effort towards God, anything coming around me, God will give me plenty of time. Amen. And even if I don't see it coming, God will give me plenty of protection. Amen. You wanna know why? Because the Bible says, seek ye first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and how many things? All things shall be what? Added unto you. Here we go. What is first fruit, church? 
First fruit is the first of the crops of the fruit that ripened was gathered and offered to God according to the ritual of Pentecost. Now I want y'all to notice there's a little word that caught your eye right there, right? Pentecost. Remember in the New Testament, the day of Pentecost? Now there's a relation there, okay? Now watch this. Bread was made of new grain and offered at Pentecost, the day of the first fruits, Pentecost. Pentecost was 50 days after the Passover. This is how it goes. Remember, Okay, let's come back to our lesson, our lesson on Revelations. Okay, remember, the number seven is a symbolic num number. It means the number of perfection. It's Father, Son, Holy Ghost, three, north, south, east, west, physical realm. Seven is perfection in the Jewish culture. All right, now we're there, amen, now watch. In the Jewish culture, in order God, for God to teach the Jews about the perfection of how they should approach him, and the perfection of Christ on the way, the Passover lamb, <laughs> I'm gonna teach anyway, watch. The Passover lamb that the Jews were supposed to put the blood on the post so that death would pass over them, the Passover was to remember what God did for them and they were to sweep all of the leaven out of their homes because leaven represented sin. So that's where we get the unleavened bread for the New Testament church from. Amen? Amen. And they are, were supposed to do these seven days for seven weeks. Seven times seven is 49. And the day after that seven and seven, was the 50th day, which is the Greek word for Pentecost. All right, I wanted to say that before I showed it to you, amen? Watch this. First of all, Shabbat or Pentecost, they were related the same holiday. Shabbat in the Hebrew meant weeks. Seven weeks are counted from the day following the beginning of the Passover for a total of what days, church? 49, very good, darling. And Leviticus 23, verse 15 says it. The 50th day ushers in Shabbat, hence the name Pentecost, which in the Greek means 50. Amen? If you got that, say amen. amen. Now, check this out. Leviticus 23, verse 15 says what? God says straight in the Bible, now amen. You shall count seven full weeks from the day after the Sabbath. That's Saturday. From the day that you brought in the sheaf of the wave offering, that's that meal that you make. The day of Pentecost was a Sunday. First day of the week. Amen? That's, we don't meet on the Sabbath because we're not under the Old Testament any longer. But we're under the new, but the old is a shadow of the new. In Exodus, God says, don't be stingy as your wine vats fill up. Dedicate your firstborn sons to me. The same with your cattle and sheep. They are to stay for how many days, church? There you go, darling. You're doing an excellent job. Keep saying that. With their mother and then give them to me. God says, listen, whatever grows in your field, the best and the first one comes to me. Seven days with his mama. Why? Now, Medically, and this is why I know God's word is so serious because they didn't know this. Medically, a, a child as well as an animal, it has to have seven days of nursing so that it cre creates all the antibodies it needs so it can survive on its own. That's why you got to have a, a, a dog with pups. It's got to be there for at least seven days, amen? Because from the mother's milk will come all the antibodies to protect it. But they didn't know all that scientific stuff, uh, but God did, amen? So now what happens is God says, dedicate your firstborn to me. Your first, amen? And then in Nehemiah 10, 34, it says, and we cast lots among the priests, the Levites, and the people for their wood offering to bring it to the house of God after the houses of our fathers at times appointed year by year to burn upon the altar of the Lord as it is what? Written in the law. God wrote in the law, give me your first. Church, that didn't change in the New Testament. God still expects our best now. If we break the law, we are law breakers. We are law breakers. That's why God says, give me your first seed to bring the first fruit of our what? 
ground and the first fruit of all fruit of all trees year by year unto the house of the Lord. Now, the other part of this is this. Now, now church, this, this, this is the part that gets interesting. It's not on the good year that you do it. It's not on the bad year that you do it. It's year by year. You don't give good one year and say, look, I gave enough last year. I ain't giving that much this year. You don't pray to God for six months, say, I didn't get what I was wanting, to, wanting from God. I'm going to quit praying at six months because I ain't get what I want. Well, God is trying to get you to where you need to be first. Because, see, God cannot give us a blessing we can't handle. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. So you can't, you can't ask for that new car if you ain't got the finances to handle that car. Amen. But if your finances of that new car is going to take away from your giving from God, then God didn't send you that. Satan did. You don't think Satan got some dealerships? Amen. <laughs> Lord Jesus. We say, Lord, you bless me with this car. And you finance right out of your ears. Amen. That wasn't God. Satan put you in that debt. Amen, somebody. And he says, also the firstborn of our sons of our cattle, as it is written in the, y'all, do y'all get that? It is what? Written in the law. And the first thing of our herds and our flocks to bring to the house of our God unto the priests that minister unto the house of our God. See, God says the fruit, first fruit, are his and holy. And he will bless us for our giving. He gave us the best, so he wants us to do the same. I want you to understand something. The first money that comes out of your paycheck belongs to God. Amen. The first hour of your day belongs to God. Amen. Yeah, y'all ready for something deep? Amen. You, you, you're probably going to be sorry y'all came because once you learn this, you know you're responsible for this, right? Amen. The first words out of your mouth in the morning belong to God. Amen. You don't wake up going, foul and filth and filth and foul and, whoa, whoa. Them the first fruits you given to the Lord? The first greeting of the day belongs to God and should be to God. Thanking God. <laughs> Amen? Oh, that's all right, y'all. First of all, we're going to go through the principle, and then the lesson is yours. Amen? Remember that we use the amen principle because the Bible says every matter is established with two or three witnesses. And so in being a sound doctrinal teaching church, we don't just use one verse to prove a point of any kind, but it must be the amen principle. Right, church? First of all, let's go and review what is the amen principle. If there's any question or any topic in the Bible, we must at least have a Bible what? Answer. That's what the A stands for. We need to have a Bible answer. It gives us our proof of whatever it is that we're talking about. And then secondly, we must have a Bible what? Mate. A Bible mate means we have another verse that backs up what that first verse says. Amen? It gives us our promise. See, there's proof and then there's promise. Amen? Then the third thing in the amen principle is the E. It stands for a what? Now, if you can't find an example of what you're saying God is trying to guide you to, then you could be misusing God's word to justify something you really want and not what God wants for you. Amen? Last but not least is the N, which is a what? New self-love invitation or invitation. This means, what does God want me to do with this concept now? Because, for example, there are some things in the Old Testament that don't pertain to us. We don't have to do lamb sacrifices anymore. Amen? But the principle is, remember the blood that was shed for us. Amen? Okay, so now, the Bible answer with first fruit breakthrough. Do y'all remember Cain and Abel? Now, you know what I've heard on many occasions? And I may have actually done this by accident before, and I've repented for it since. A lot of people say God didn't accept Cain's sacrifice because Cain brought grain instead of a lamb like Abel did. That's not true. That's not what upset God. Because we just read, did we not just read a few moments ago that God says, bring the grain to me and bring the plants and bring, oh, did we not just, the whole lesson been about fresh first fruits, right? So it wasn't that Cain brought fruit or something from the ground. That wasn't the problem. 
It was because Cain picked random stuff to bring to God. He didn't bring the first and the best. Amen? See, that's what got Cain in trouble. Look at the difference between Cain's offering and Abel's offering from the message version of the Bible. It describes it best. Church, watch this. In Genesis 4, verse 3 and 5, time passed, Cain brought an offering. I want y'all to notice that wording there. An offering to God from the produce of his farm. Now, did the Bible say first fruit? No. What did Cain bring? He just brought some stuff to God. Amen? So he figured, well, first and last, it don't matter which one it is, as long as I bring something. That's what we say in the church today. As long as I'm here, be glad. God didn't say that. God didn't say that. Amen? God loves a giver, but he likes a what? A cheerful giver. Amen? Look at what it says. Abel bought an offering, but, now notice the Bible says but. Now catch this, look up for a second. But from the what? Firstborn animals of his herd and choice cuts of meat. See, Abel didn't bring bologna. Abel brought filet mignon to God. Abel didn't bring hog moths to God. He brought God the pork shoulder and the leanest of the pork. Amen? Abel brought God the best he had to offer. And that's why the Bible says that God liked Abel and his offering, but Cain and his offering didn't get his approval. And Cain lost his temper and went to a sulk. Now here is Cain with an attitude, but he created that upon himself because he tried to cut corners with God. Church, let me tell you something. Don't cut corners with God. Amen. Give God your best beauty, your best voice, your best effort, your best giving. Don't give him a half effort. People wonder, why do you preach so hard in the evening time? I'm giving God my best, whether that's five or 500. God deserves the best. So it matters not who's here, except I know who's here. God is here. And God will reward the best effort from you. Amen. Amen. That's why the crowd don't ever phase how I do what I do, church. Amen. That's why I tend to jump up more when there's less people. Amen, somebody. The second thing is the Bible what, church? Mate. In Nehemiah 10, 37, look what he says. Nehemiah says it very clear, clear. Here's what we're going to do. We will bring the best of our grain. Amen? Somebody say the best. And of our contributions and the fruit from what tree? Every tree of wine and oil to the priests and the storerooms of the temple of God. And we will bring the tithe from our fields to the Levites. Since the Levites are appointed to collect the tithes in the town where we work. We'll see to it that a priest descended from Aaron, a qualified man, will supervise the Levites as they collect the tithes and make sure that they take a tenth of the tithes to the treasury in the temple of our God. We'll see to it that the people of Israel and the Levites bring the grain, wine, oil to the storage room where the vessels of the sanctuary are kept and where the priests who serve the security gods the choir meet they will not neglect the temple of our god they're saying we're going to make sure that we put the best in god's sanctuary when you donate something to the church don't donate something that you wouldn't want in your house because it's beat up messed up stanky or whatever what is that if you're gonna donate something to the church, donate the best, amen? Because God watches what we give to him and how we give to him. So now we have a Bible answer and a Bible mate. So what about a Bible? What do we need to get next, church? A Bible what? Yeah. Now, what kind of an example of giving do we need to cite? Well, you know, funny we should say that. John 3:16. This is how much God loved the world. He gave his son, his one and only son. Amen? And this is why, so that no, need, no one need to be destroyed by believing in him, anyone can have the whole and lasting life. 
God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son merely to point an accusing finger, telling the world how bad it was. He came to help to put the world right again. Anyone who trusts in him is acquitted. Anyone who refuses to trust him has long since been under the death sentence without knowing it. And why? Because of that person's failure to believe in the one of a kind son of God when introduced to him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God didn't just give his best. God gave his only. That's the example of giving that God gives to us. See, God sacrificed more towards us than we ever will towards him. Because you will have another paycheck. Amen. Amen? You will have another piece of fruit. God would not have another son. Amen. And he gave him to us Amen. of all people. So you have the Bible example there. See, we must follow the Bible example because does it not back up the idea of first fruit and the law of first fruit? Amen. And last but not least, the new self-love invitation. Well, what is God asking for us to do today? What is it that God wants us to understand today? The Bible says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 8 through 11. First of all, in 6 and 7, it says this, that a stingy farmer gets a stingy crop. That's the first thing it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 from this same version. We read that this morning. He who sows sparingly shall reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully shall reap bountifully. Amen? For God loves a cheerful giver. Now look at what the next two verses, because we rarely go to the next two verses. But watch what it says. When you sow to God the first fruit of your life, here's what God does back to you. Amen, somebody. God can pour on the blessing in astonishing ways so that you're ready for anything and everything, more than just ready to do what needs to be done. As one psalmist put it, he throws caution to the wind, giving to the needy and reckless abandoning. His right living, right giving ways never run out, never wear out. God will give you more than what you need because you've given him your first fruit. This most generous God who gives seed to the farmer that becomes bread for your meals is more than extravagant with you. He gives you something that you can give away. In other words, God gives you so much, you'll be given away your blessings, amen, somebody, which grows into full form lives, robust in God, wealthy in every way, so that you can be generous in every way, producing with us great praise to God. God wants to give you so much that when you give him your first, he will give you a flood of blessings behind it, amen. He says, try me, church, and I will give you, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't be able to receive it because God gave us Jesus. He gave us a way of, out of no way. He gave us a plan when we didn't have a plan. He gave us a savior when we didn't have saving nowhere near us. Our God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond all that we dare ask or think through the power that worketh in us, world without end. Yeah. And he can do it to you. You must hear God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. After you hear, you must believe. See, a lot of people say, well, I know what the gospel is. It's the word of God. No, it ain't. It's in the word of God. But it's not the word of God because the devil is in the word of God too. You must hear, believe, repent. That means change how you're thinking, how you're approaching things. Confess that I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Then you must be baptized. Why? So that you can obey the gospel. Remember, Christ was dead on the cross. You're dead when you step in the water. Christ was buried in the ground. When you go underneath the water, you're buried into his death. Christ came out, resurrected on the third day. You come up out of the water, that's when you're a new creature. See, if you didn't understand that clearly when you were baptized, you weren't even baptized with the right knowledge or teaching. Amen. And there's even examples in the Bible of people that were rebaptized when they were like, oh, I didn't know that. No big deal. So what if you didn't know it? You know it now. This is your time. 
Thank you for joining us for this program. We pray that the word you receive has been an encouragement and an uplifting opportunity for you. And we're still focusing on changing you from the old self-love to the new self-love so you can change those problems you've been dealing with over and over again and leave them in the past.